by the stars of Chicagoland, your local crime. I'm about the middle of the third deck here at the United Center. You can get a much better seat right in front of your television tonight on WGN as the Bulls take on the Detroit Pistons. You know, the entire Bulls organization shares in the glory of the team's achievements this year, and that includes Bulls chairman of the board, Jerry Reinsdorf. Wayne Larrabee sat down with Reinsdorf this morning at his Comiskey Park Sky Suite, where they share views of the infield and of this record-setting season. Well, here we are in the best seat of the house, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf, uh, less than two days after a historic win by your ball club, the Chicago Bulls, up in Milwaukee. And, and, and I wonder, what are your thoughts on, on 70 and, and that tremendous plateau? Well, I, I think 70 was more of a media thing than it was uh, in terms of meaning for us. If we win the championship, then we can look back and say that you know, 70 games is great. Maybe it means we're the best team of all time. But if we don't win the championship, then we're the 1906 Chicago Cubs or the 1954 Cleveland Indians. Let's just go back. Last year, Michael came back. And in the end, this team never really quite came together with Michael. What do you see with the differences this year? Well, of course, when Michael came back last year, he came back with a baseball player's body. He wasn't really ready to, uh, uh, you know, to play basketball. What he did over the summer was he got rid of the baseball body and he, he found his basketball body. That, that made a big difference because there are, you know, vastly different muscles that are used in, in the two sports. Uh, so I think, you know, that was extremely important. Uh, the addition of Dennis Rodman obviously made a big difference. We, you know, the reason that we, we lost last year uh, was we didn't uh, still like to say retrieve the ball well enough. And uh, the, the, the addition of Dennis took care of that and I, and, and I think filled, you know, filled the huge hole. But, you know, this team, as all of the teams that we've had over the years, are really, you know, a tribute, obviously, to the players themselves, to Phil's coaching, but really to the genius of Jerry Trout. Phil Jackson, will he continue to be the coach here? Where do you stand with those negotiations? Well, you know, we've always said that we don't give out interim uh, bulletins on <laughs> negotiations. Uh, but I've said to you on the air, and I've said over and over again, I think Phil's the best coach in the league. We certainly want to have Phil back. Uh, we, we want Michael back. We want to keep him. You know, we, we, the final decisions obviously get made later, but we basically want to keep the team together because as long as Michael's playing, uh, we, we think we have a chance to win championship. Are you, have you been talking with Phil? Are you, you're close to a, a situation there? Uh, any ideas that we, we can cling to, so to speak? <laughs> well, well we, we've had conversations and I, I hope and expect that we're going to get things worked out. Now, Michael Jordan, has anything been done preliminarily with his situation uh, so far? There has not been a single conversation because under the NBA rules uh, of the new collective bargaining agreement, you're not allowed to, to even begin negotiations on a contract until the player's contract is over, unless you're talking about a 20% increase or less. And I don't think Michael wants a 20% <laughs> increase. If he does, I'm ready to sign now. <laughs> right. But I don't think that this is going to be a negotiation. I, I, I believe that the relationship between uh, Michael and the, and, and the club and, and, and Michael and me particularly is one that we, we should just sit down, have some conversations over the course of the summer, talk about what's there, and I think in the end we'll, we'll end up uh, agreeing on a number as, as being the right number. I don't want it to be a negotiation. I just want it to be a conversation between people who like and respect each other. You've got Jordan, you've got Jackson to take care of, you've got a team that will probably win a title this spring. Um, that wouldn't this be a great time? Isn't this a great time to sell the Chicago Bulls? Um, and then what, what would your response be to that? Well, then what do I do? Uh, you know, anchor the 10 o'clock news? I'm go to Arizona <laughs> and join Jerry Colangelo or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just enjoying, you know, life one day at a time. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy because I know I'm ahead of a lot of other people didn't make it that day. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I've lost so many friends in the, in the last few years that, uh, I just want to enjoy Every day. There used to be a, a, a fellow on the radio here in town, and Jack Eigen, used to say, live every day like it's your last, and one day you'll be right. And <laughs> that's kind of my attitude. Back to you, Dan. All right, Wayne, thank you very much. You know, Jerry uh, will have to make some changes with this ball club. There's very little question about that, uh, given how much he has to do with the club over the summer. to address those issues at halftime tonight, so you want to stay tuned uh, for that as well. Only three regular season games left. The playoffs right on the horizon. And we'll check who may be the Bell's first round playoff opponent when we continue from the United Center right after this. A month now.
Well, who's going to be the number one seed in the Eastern Conference when the playoffs begin? But the battle for the number eight seed and the Bulls' first-round playoff opponent is still very much up for grabs. And for more on that situation, back to court side we go. Bill Weir standing by. Bill? Yes, thank you, Dan. Four days left in the regular season. Two teams left scrapping for the honor of playing these Bulls the first round of the playoffs. Not the most tasty of propositions. Nonetheless, the Miami Heat and Charlotte Hornets gunning for that final spot in the East. Now, Miami takes their turn in the historic Bradley Center tomorrow night before finishing up Sunday uh, home against the Hawks. The Hornets need to win, well, pretty much all three of their finals to have a decent shot tonight against the Bucks, and then Friday at New York, finishing up Sunday against Orlando. Most of the hope there is that Shaq and Penny will be resting for the playoffs. As for the resting Bulls, one of the advantages of clinching that playoff spot like in February sometime, is having plenty of time to prepare. So we asked Bulls assistant Jimmy Clemens for a double barrel scouting report. First thing that you have to be concerned about is, is morning. And knowing Pat Riley, he believes in what we call power basketball. And that's the ball going into uh, Alonzo down here on the low block. And they, they'll use a variety of ways to try and get him, get him the ball in, in this position. The favorite way is though, to give the ball the harder way and he'll come up this left-hand side facing, and then they'll run Rick Chapman off of a little curl, which we call a turnout. And Hardaway will deliver the ball in about this position, all right, for two reasons. Number one, if Rex is open, being a very good perimeter shooter, he now has shots immediately. If that shot isn't there, then what he will do will face up, and he'll dump the ball into Alonzo in this low post position, which now gives Alonzo, the ball exactly where he wants it, and he's an immediate threat. So what they end up doing is trying to stretch your defense out to shooters here, here, and here, and saying that if you don't come help on Alonzo, then Alonzo's going to score. And if you do come help on Alonzo, then we've got shooters in these spots where we will now knock down over them. Bulls won't know which team they'll face until Sunday, so the coaches are preparing for the Hornets as well. One of Charlotte's favorite plays is the play they call four up. And the four in this case is Larry Johnson, and what they like to do is bring the ball down this side, threaten you to throw the ball in here, and they'll, what we call zipper, their three man up. Now a three man can be Curry, it can be Rice, and then what they like to do is now swing the ball here and try and get the defense to change sides to the floor. And most good offenses do that because the ball can move quicker than, than the dribble. So they try and change the side to the floor with the dribble. This will be the first pass. They'll zip him up. A quick swing over here to one of their good perimeter shooters. And once again, now the two in this case could be Rice, depending upon their lineup, Rice or Curry. And once again, they're going to try now to get the ball down here to Johnson in a one-on-one -on -one isolated situation to take advantage of his post up. Right now, Johnny Kerr joins us at courtside. John, none the worse for wear after the celebration Tuesday night? No, the brass stop <laughs> closed early, though, I'll say that. <laughs> Johnny, I don't think that there's any question that the Bulls don't fear anybody, especially in the first round of the playoffs. But their bigger concern would probably be with Miami instead of Charlotte, just because of the presence of Alonzo Mourning inside. Yeah, I think the power player in Alonzo Mourning scares him a little bit. We know what Rex Chapman can do. He made nine out of ten long distance three shots when we lost to him down there, uh, the game that they only had eight players. On the other hand, you got Robert Parrish is not that mobile a player anymore, and he he can't force himself up the court. Uh, to be a different look, uh, if you, whether you play Miami or whether you play Charlotte, both having big centers, but uh, I don't think that Robert Parrish is capable of putting 20 or 30 on the board. And one time this year, we know Zoe put 50 up there. And the fact that the Bulls have lost to each of these two teams in the recent weeks uh, really is a pretty good thing, I think, for the Bulls. Uh, they know there's some danger out there, and they'll be well prepared for it. Absolutely. They'll try to cover their weaknesses. Uh, the reason that they did lose to those two teams but I think the one thing Charlotte did in beating the Bulls here and I think Phil Jackson hit perfectly on it he says 
you know, we, we're, we thought we were in, undefeatable in this building, and maybe it shows that somebody can come in our house and take the game from us. So it makes us better prepared for playing, whether it's Miami or Charlotte, in this building. We don't want any one of them to beat us. Okay, Johnny, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again at 7.30 tonight when we get ready to tip this one off. Uh, more to come on For the Record. Phil Jackson on deck, so stay with us. Pink at the United Center tonight. Well, he's the best coach in the history of the NBA, never to have been named Coach of the Year, an honor that should not escape Phil Jackson this time around. For what's new on the Bulls bench, let's join Wayne Weller V with the head coach of the Bulls. Well, thanks very much, Dan Rowan. Our final bullseye edition with Phil Jackson. And uh, Coach, first off, congratulations on the 70 wins, uh, a tremendous milestone. Thanks, Wayne. You know, we're real pleased and proud of our team and the organization uh, for manufacturing 70 wins. And believe me, that's basically what you have to do over the course of the season is really generate energy and momentum to do it. You know, it's a goal you got, um, a plateau you reached, but I don't get the impression it took anything extra out of this team. Now, did it from your perspective? In other words, you guys wanted to stay focused and play well all season doesn't seem like 70 wins was something that uh, you reached with an exasperation type exclamation point. Not really. I think that when I noticed there was a little bit of a push though is when Michael mentioned the fact that let's get this 70 over somewhere around the middle of 60 he started saying you know let's get this out of the way and when uh, Scotty went down and was injured and uh, stopped playing for those five uh, seven games that he, he was out in the middle of March um, there was something, let's keep our streak going, let's keep marching to 70, I overheard in their huddles when they were coming out of the locker room. So I do know that there's a real concerted effort towards it. All right, uh, having won 70 in the regular season, first team ever to do that, does that put more pressure on you guys as a group going into the playoffs to win it all? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt that people would like to knock us off, and who wouldn't though anyway, regardless whether we had 65 or 70 wins. but. The team that has 70 definitely has a chip on its shoulder. At least it's ready to get it, the chip knocked off. And we anticipate that there is a little more pressure. But I'm telling these guys that, you know, it doesn't matter uh, if you have 55 or 70. you still got pressure on you to win. You've got almost two weeks to go before the playoffs. or the better part of two weeks. Uh, you've got three games left in the regular season. You've said you're going to rest some of your starters and that type of thing. Uh, but isn't there a fine line between resting and going stale and being ready for the playoffs? I'm glad you understand that, Wayne, because one of the finest lines is keeping a team tuned up and then letting them slack off and execution breaks down and rhythm goes and then pretty soon you're not making shots and guys are forcing things and that kind of action happens. Now the one thing about it that changes is a player like a Michael or Scotty who are used to playing 10 minute shifts, two, three, four off in between periods or between the first and second, third and fourth periods suddenly are playing eight minutes and so they're sitting eight minutes and they come back on the floor cold and they have to then regenerate the momentum and energy and get that sweat going again so that they can uh, play well. Well, best of luck and thanks for all your time this year. We've certainly enjoyed it here on the Bullseye and uh, good luck in the upcoming playoffs, Bill. Thanks, thank Wayne. you. Bill Jackson, head coach of the Chicago Bulls. Let's send it back to Dan Ron. Wayne, thank you very much. Bulls basketball continues on WGN in just a moment. The Bulls pregame coming your way next. is brought to you by the Stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Smooth, refreshing Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. 76 brand gasoline. If you depend on your car to perform, depend on 76 gasoline to keep it a performance car. Wendy's, where better food makes it a better value. Ameritech, your link to better communication. And by your local Chicagoland and Northern Indiana GMC truck dealers. Tonight on the west side of Chicago, Bulls fans welcome home the most victorious team in NBA history. And the Bulls begin the windup of their regular season when they host the Pistons of Detroit. Good evening, everybody. Once again, from the United Center here in Chicago, Dan Roan. It's nice to have you with us. For the bullseye, and those of you who have been with us for the past half hour, welcome back to the show. Uh, Bulls and the Pistons tonight, a couple of old rivals square off again, and just a couple of regular season games left for the Bulls after tonight. 
you know, it's been a great run. We all know that. 38 and 1 here in the United Center. Uh, 38 and 8 away from here. Uh, Bulls with 70 victories, only nine defeats, and a uh, playoff run that we hope will be a long one uh, looming ahead. And uh, common sense would tell you that as well as the Bulls have played as a team this season, they will go as far in the playoffs as Michael Jordan will carry them. And earlier tonight, Randy Salerno cut up with MJ as he came into the building. You've had a couple days to think about it. Uh, anything new come to mind when you think about 70? No. It's just this... Uh... It's a great achievement for the franchise, I think, and for a lot of the players who have never experienced this type of excitement. You know, all the, the, the city surrounding the 70 wins and the t-shirts and all the different things and the exposure. And you know, some of the guys are really enthused about it, which hopefully is the motivation for the you know, ultimate goal of winning a championship. What, uh, what do you do for these next three games? Do you, are there certain things you want to work on, or do you just want to stay healthy, or do you want to stay in shape? What are you trying to do? You just try to maintain a certain rhythm, you know, and win all three. You know, we don't, I don't think... We want to lose any, and uh, we want to go into the playoff on a good note, you know. And quite naturally, I think some of the other guys can get some playing time, and you know, he's going to diminish myself and Scotty and some of the other starters, and make sure everybody get in, get some heavy, heavy minutes. Do you ever worry when you got a team like Detroit that is playing for something right now, and you guys aren't, that uh, could get ugly? No, I don't think it's going to get ugly. I think uh, you know it can be very competitive. You know, uh, keep our focus really uh, on the game and, and trying to win the game. Okay, Mike. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Good luck tonight. All right. Michael Jordan, uh, about an hour or so, half hour or so before game time here as the Bulls try for 71, Dan. They may have a chance to get it, Randy, but as you said, Detroit has plenty to play for tonight. The Pistons, uh, 45 and 34 coming in. They're just a game behind the Knicks for fourth place in the Eastern Conference and the home court advantage that would go with that in the first round. The uh, Pistons were in action last night against the Indiana Pacers. The GMC truck highlights and what a job Doug Collins has done in Motown this year. Allen Houston turned into a different player this year under Collins. And the Pacers shorthanded last night without the injured Reggie Miller. Got a big game from Mark Jackson out on the point. Larry Brown's team not able to stay with him all night, though. And three more right here. Allen Houston made six of those last night in a 31-point performance. Terrific game for him. Second half, more Jackson coming up. The penetration move, but Grant Hill had the answer for that for Detroit. In traffic, got it off the board. And with the game on the line down at the end, they go to the corner to Terry Mills, who's got the range. That's a three. And Detroit a winner, 102-93. to Three-point crazy last night in the Palace. The Eastern Conference standings look like this. Well, it still looks like a misprint. 70 wins and nine defeats for the Bulls. Orlando second, Indiana third, but struggling now with uh, Miller on the sideline for at least three more weeks. Uh, New York trying to hold on to that number four position, but being pressed and pressed hard by Cleveland, Detroit, and a uh, long shot for the fourth spot would be Atlanta with Miami right now holding down number eight. It'll be the Heat or the Charlotte Hornets in the first round for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, the Pistons, you know, again, what a great job Doug Collins has done back in the coaching ranks after a great run as a broadcaster for TNT. Uh, earlier tonight, we caught up with Doug Collins. Bill Weir spoke with him downstairs. Thank you, Dan. Coach, a uh, couple games left and still a lot of drama. You can uh, position yourself either four or seven in the playoffs, so it's still a lot to shoot for. Today. Yeah, uh, unlike Chicago, who's pretty much locked in uh, and just wants to get the season over, we've got uh, we've got some wins we need to get. So, uh, you know, tonight's going to be very difficult. Grant's not going to play. He's got a sore foot, and Joe Dumars has an upper, uh, upper respiratory infection. So uh, we're a little shorthanded, so let's see what happens. As far as the Bulls go, do you expect to set a lot of second liners? Well, I know that they're going to play to win, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, with us being shorthanded, uh, Michael and Scotty's minutes probably will be cut back, I'm sure, because I, I don't think that uh, we can match their firepower tonight. So they'll probably come out of the gate quickly and try to jump on us, and then I'm sure Phil will try to monitor their time. Looking for another effort like last night. Well, we played well last night. Our, our guys, it was probably as good as we've moved the ball all season long. We, we played unselfishly. Uh, we had fresh legs and fresh minds. We had taken two days off, and, you know, it's been, it's been a grind for us. It's been a grind for the Bulls also to get to 70, and uh, it's been a grind for us to get to 45. I think that sort of tells you where the disparity is between these two teams right now. All right. Thanks for your okay, time. My, Appreciate my, it. My pleasure. Last night he said he was just happy he didn't have to be the Al Dowling of the NBA. Of course, Al Dowling, the man who served up Hank Aaron's 715th home run. Dan? 
All right, Bill, thank you. Doug Collins has a lot of friends in this town. Uh, did a great job coaching the Bulls when he was here. And he'll be uh, up against it tonight with Grant Hill not playing. We didn't know that. Uh, that'll be a tough thing for Detroit to overcome in this game tonight. Well, when we come back, uh, Phil Jackson doing stand-up. We'll see you here first when we continue. 26 consecutive sellout crowd making its way into the United Center tonight. And what an ovation the Bulls will hear when they hit the floor for the first time holding that record. 70 regular season victories. Dan Rohn back at the United Center. Uh, welcome back to the Bullseye pregame. You know, we cannot pin Randy Salerno down. He's underneath the stadium. He's at courtside. Right now he's got a skybox ticket or something. Randy? Just until the game starts, I told Dan that I am out of here. You know, how many of you have sat at home or sat in the stand or sat in the skybox here and wondered to yourself, you know, what has been the key to this season? Well, we went to Phil Jackson and we said, hey, Phil, David Letterman can do it. You can do it. Letterman and his writers may have perfected the top ten list, but Phil Jackson takes it to a whole new zen-like level. My top ten reasons for the Bulls and their success this year, Albert Meal and Eric Holland, uh, Helen's super protein workouts. E, let's put these weights away. You got it, Coach. Let's move it over here. You got that in? Yeah, I got that. How come you give me the heavy end, though? Uh, Jerry Krause's bagel runs to the deli. Would you like some cream cheese with it? Tex Winter's triangle applications. Uh, the offense is predicated on angles and on spacing. 15 to 18, 20 feet apart, 15 to 18 feet, 15 to 18 feet, 15 to 18 feet. Chip Schaefer's electronic stem and icing. Ah. <laughs> Sixth reason is the scouts' tremendous attitude on the road and their vision of defense. Fifth reason is Dennis Rodman's hair colorist. I wonder what Dennis is thinking about today. 15 to 18 feet. Fourth reason, Scotty Pippen's assistance. Three out of one. Two coach to his right, and Carter goes in for the jam. The third reason is MJ's scoring drive. Yeah. drive. The second reason is Jerry Reinsdorf's United Center. The Chicago Bulls have won their 44th in a row at home. 15 to 18 feet. And the first reason is the Bulls' unity as a team. What the is it? Good job, is it just me or do I keep hearing somebody say 15 to 18 feet? You know, Dan, if Phil doesn't get that new contract, uh, I understand he's got a whole tour lined up this summer. He's at the Lab Zone in Boston on uh, April 23rd. Then I think he's at a comedy club in New York shortly after that, Caroline's or something like that. Your rating is very, very high, Randy, but I think somebody back in the truck is 15 to 18 feet off center. Thanks very much for that report. Uh, now, uh, time to get serious again and talk about the Bulls' run toward a championship. The 70 victory thing is over and done with, and now it's on to the big prize. And if the Bulls do come through and make it four championships for this franchise, they will be joining some very elite companies. The Minneapolis Lakers won five titles between 1948 and in 1954. The Boston Celtics won their record eight straight championships a decade later, and the Lakers of the 80s won five trophies. Winning a title is one thing. Keeping the team together is the key to remaining on top. Forty years ago, there was no free agency or expansion draft to break up teams. George Mikan played in all five Minneapolis championships. Bill Russell anchored the middle for the Celtics, and Bob Cousy and Tom Heinsohn were there for most of the eight straight. Back in the days I played, and even when I coached, it was easier to keep a nucleus together because the player, once he signed, was yours and could go no place else. But the camaraderie necessary to all play together as a team, I think, was much easier then than it is now. Even the Lakers of the 80s had Magic and Kareem for all five championships. James Worthy and Byron Scott joined up for the final three. So while Jordan and Pippen are left over from the Bulls' three-peat years, don't think this team is an extension of those clubs. This is an entirely different type of team. They still are using the same offensive system. Our defense is considerably different. This team is more of a 
uh, an adjusted adult type team where the runs are off of energy that the game creates. Massive breakthroughs with this ball club as far as second and third quarter just breaking the team down and, and really eliminating a game as a, a competitive venture. Assuming the Bulls go on to win the championship this spring, they will join that elite group and those comparisons will be inevitable. The Showtime Lakers won almost 75% of their games in those five championship seasons. Adding the Bulls 70 wins to their three-peat years, they would lead the pack at nearly 79%. In the playoffs over the same period, the Bulls have won almost 78% of their games. In point differential, the Celtics outscored their opponents by more than seven points per game over their eight championship years. The Bulls are two points better than that. Statistically, at least, the Bulls are right up there with the dynasties of the past. Realistically, the numbers don't mean anything until June. Very true, but it's always fun to speculate. I thought Tom Heinsohn may have brought up the best point in that whole piece when he said that it's so tough to keep a team together these days because of free agency and the lack of camaraderie really hurts some basketball teams. That's what's made this situation so unique. The coaching staff, the players, uh, Michael Jordan at the top, but certainly Pippen and now Rodman and all the rest, able to keep it together, uh, form a cohesive team unit, and win 70 games this season and certainly uh, put themselves in the favorites role to win an NBA championship in 1996. More to come here on the Bullseye, including Dennis Rodman. He's next. You won't want to miss it. Without Grant Hill, loosening up for what's a very important game for them tonight here at the United Center against the Chicago Bulls. Well, you know, there's a certain pink-haired power forward we haven't talked very much about yet tonight. You know how far the Bulls have come since November, and you can double that for Dennis Rodman. I've been here for a year, so i got to deal with it. I love Chicago. Chicago's cool. You know, Chicago, we go together as one, and... Never just a book by his cover. <laughs> when he burst onto the scene last October, questions were flying. Chicago was skeptical. But six months later, Dennis Rodman is not only stopping traffic, he's electrified the city. They'll put up the three. Yeah, they have dedicated himself to you to allow Dennis Rodman to be here. So I dedicate myself to, to, to bring what the people want. It hasn't all been blitz. Dennis came equipped with his rebounding ability, but he also brought his reputation. Let me do the dirty work, and you know, let me be the, the bad guy. Oh, 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 oh. It looks like he headbutted him. It's just ridiculous, but uh, I just roll with the punches. They were punches that cost him both money and respect. A lot of people want to see me fail. Once you fall on my face, and all I do is just kind of say, you know, turn around, you know, you know. Next thing you know, it's like, damn, he did it. He did it again. He did it again. He's still in the league. One more year, he's still here, and that's that's my goal. You know, as many as people try to knock me back, two steps, I'm going four. But his unpaid vacation was not as painful as it could have been. This is a very well-rounded and competitive team. No matter who's gone, someone's going to pick it up and. It's not just Michael, Scott, and Dennis show. It's the Chicago Bulls and, you know, everyone's just involved show. It's not a show anymore. It's become a circus. And Dennis is right at home. A free agent at the end of the season, he'd like nothing more than to remain a bull. If I could walk away in two years, it'd be great. Yeah. If things don't happen the way I want them to, to, I should retire. You know, my life's complete. It's no, you know, I won't come back to basketball at all. Whatever happens, there will always be a Chicago tint to Dennis Rodman. It's been very erotic, very sensual, very uh, demure. Um, it's been very, um, hmm, it's been a dream, though. It's been a dream for me. You know, I felt that I've reached new heights. I haven't reached, I haven't reached, anything until I came to Chicago. It's been 
one major party. <laughs> so I'm here for the ride and hopefully I'll be here for the long haul. If, I, if I'm not, thank you very much for having me in Chicago. The tour continues. Boy, for a guy who was hated as much as any visiting athlete in the city's history, I think, Dennis Rodman has just captivated Chicago. He's changed colors more times than a chameleon. And Terry Armour of the Chicago Tribune has been following him every step of the way as the Bulls beat writer this year. Terry, I don't know what you thought when Dennis came on back in October, but I was very skeptical like most other people would. And uh, yeah. right now you'd have to say this has been just a smashing success. Yeah, uh, but one thing that I think a lot of people should probably be concerned about, not saying that this is going to happen or anything like that, but the, I, the San Antonio Spurs felt the same way the last two seasons. And... Uh, the problems tend to happen with Dennis when the postseason arises, but as far as this season is concerned, the entire regular season, I think Dennis is very comfortable here. The fans have embraced him, and I think that says a lot about him. And uh, I, I really think he won't be a distraction. He really is making a push to be here next year or to show teams that are looking at him that he can help them out over the course of the next two or three seasons. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. The Bulls making their way onto the floor. Terry, and there's Dennis. Uh, I talked with him the other day in that interview, and he told me he'd love to come back here. In fact, he wasn't sure he wanted to play anywhere else but Chicago, but that he would like six or seven million dollars a year to do it. What do you think the chances are of that happening? I, I don't think he's going to make that much money from the Bulls, but I think that he can make so much money in endorsements off the court by being in Chicago that that will be something that will weigh heavily on his decision uh, if he does want to stay here if the Bulls do make an offer. I think there's still a strong chance that the Bulls may not try to keep Dennis, but there could be a a huge public relations backlash if that happens. Yeah, no question. Hey, are you ready for the playoff run? I'm ready to rumble. <laughs> okay, Terry, thank you very much. Great work all season long. Been fun working with you. Terry Armour from the Chicago Tribune. We're back to wrap things up on the Bullseye from the United Center right after this. sellout crowd here at the United Center welcoming the Bulls onto the floor for their pregame warm-ups. Uh, the guys that have given them so many thrills this season. Dennis Rodman. Michael Jordan, of course. Scotty Pippen and many, many others that have done such a terrific job for this organization this year. And as we get set to pack it in here on WGN for the pregame show, there are a few people we'd like to thank, too. First, uh, Wayne Larrabee and Johnny Kerr. Bill Weir, Randy Salerno, Terry Armour for all their help, and all the people in the truck, especially our producers, Mandy Cohen, John Walgren, uh, Joe Corneo, Skip Ellison, and Arnie Harris. These guys take such pride in their work and work so hard, and they're so creative that they make this show as fun as it is for me to do and as fun as it is for you to watch. So that's it. Enjoy the game, everybody. We'll see you at halftime, and good luck to the Bulls in the playoffs. So long, everybody. is brought to you by the Stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Smooth, refreshing Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. 76 brand gasoline. If you depend on your car to perform, depend on 76 gasoline to keep it a performance car. Wendy's, where better food makes it a better value. Ameritech, your link to better communication. And by your local Chicagoland and Northern Indiana GMC truck dealers. Guests on Bullseye receive a Zenith Color TV with remote control. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. And a handsome piece of jewelry from Henry K. Jewelers, third-level water tower place, Chicago.